Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So today we are planting up the stuck tank. And if you've been here for the last two years, it looks a little different than normal because I typically plant my watermelon and my cucumber plants vining up these two trellises. And this is my little vegetable fruit uh, stock tank planter. But with the addition of the raised beds, which are directly behind y'all in the shed, I have way more room to grow my fruits and veggies. And I've got carrots growing and strawberries and potatoes, and I'm just a happy little clam. But that leaves my adorable little stock take planter empty. And I have been thinking about what to do with it for a while. <laughs> so there are still a few things to figure out. I have two clematises that I bought from Bare Root growing on. I potted them up. They looked pretty dead when I took them out of their little bags. So I'm not 100% sure that they're alive or will grow. But I potted them up and we will see if they don't grow, um, we may do something else. If they do grow, the clematis might go here. Typically clematis like to have their feet in the shade and face in the sun. So I might plant one behind the rows to grow up on the porch and one here. But regardless of what I end up doing with the trellises, I know what I'm doing in the actual stock tank garden. So I've decided since I planted my milkweed right on the other side of this for the monarchs, milkweed for monarchs, I am trying to plant. My dogs are so excited they can see me. I'm trying to plant as much native milkweed to me as possible to help the monarch butterflies. They need it. I love them. And I would rather have as many butterflies in my garden as possible. So I actually went to a butterfly gardening class at my local nursery that they held um, either last weekend, the weekend before, and they went all over the concept of nectar plants and host plants which of course, if you have been butterfly gardening for any amount of time, you know that nectar plants are things like lantana that the butterflies like to get nectar from. I have a lot of nectar plants already in my garden. Things like petunias, um, lantana, pentas are a really good one, salvia. These are things that I naturally like and grow partially because I like the plants and partially because the butterflies like them and hummingbirds. But in addition to the beautiful, beautiful nectar plants that all butterflies will drink from, some butterflies will only lay their eggs on specific plants and the caterpillars when they're young will only eat the leaves of that specific plant. So milkweed is the monarch's host plant. It is also the only plant that the baby monarch caterpillar caterpillars will eat as they grow up. Hi, Biddy. Don't worry, Biddy doesn't eat a host plant. She eats anything I give her, huh, Biddy? You wanna sit with me? So in addition to milkweed, there are other plants that you can plant that are beneficial for other butterflies. So two of those that I'm planting today, you can find anywhere at your local garden center, or even at your big box store are parsley and dill. So both of these are readily available and I'm sure I could get much bigger, beautiful, prettier plants, but this is what I could find. And since I'm a beginning butterfly gardener, you gotta start somewhere. Um, dill, the portion kind I got anyways, grows. see it doesn't even say there it is 18 to 24 high and needs about 12 to 15 inches of space so I bought two of these I'm going to tuck them back here it is my tallest um, layer of this planter so I bought one for either side they're pretty hardy and I'm going to plant those in the back corners where they can grow up and fill in then I bought two parsleys. These are curled parsley and they get 12 to 18 apart and 
and 12 inches high. That's what I thought. Perfect. Now this spot here gets full morning sun and afternoon shade, which is perfect for a lot of things. Um, parsley specifically like shade. The rest of this planter could be full sun if it wanted to be. So from there, I decided to go with all nectar plants to fill in the rest of the planter. So I got two purple lantanas and these are a trailing lantana. So they will kind of trail over onto the pathway, which will be beautiful. I got a proven winners, super tunia Bordeaux. I love this plant. I planted it in my window boxes a couple years ago, but I planted it with the super tunia Vista bubblegum and the bubblegum just took over that Vista series is so aggressive. We love it. We're here for it, but the Bordeaux could not keep up. And I was so sad. Those dark purple blooms. And so as soon as I decided on the purple lantern, I was like, this is going to be a purple planter I'm doing it because I've been wanting to put this somewhere it can shine. So I'm going to put him directly in the middle. He will come up and kind of fill in and he gets, you know, it really doesn't say, but typically super tunias get anywhere from one to three feet wide in a container. He'll stay more on the one to two foot size. Then I got two trailers for the front, a Super Bells Calibracoa. I have been wanting one of these for a while, any kind of the Calibracoa. They look like teeny tiny petunias to me, but they say that Super Bells work best in containers and not in the landscape. And I haven't had a great container to put them in. So they do trail a little. I'm going to tuck him here at the front. And then I picked up a white night sweet alyssum also from proven winners this is not sponsored i just wanted these <laughs> i've planted several of these out in my garden along with a proven winner snow princess which is supposed to be able to get three to four feet wide and a bunch of sweet alyssum that i grew from seed and i'm doing an experiment to see which lives in the alabama heat and which dies I, I have a feeling i know but the white knight so far has been doing really well and growing and spreading and blooming. So he will also trail. And then we have a repeat. We have another purple lantana, our parsley and our dill on this side. We will have to plant the trellises later, depending on how those clematis go. And if I plant one by the butter, by the butterfly, by the rose, I'm trying to decide I might plant um, some grapes back here to grow at the trellises. I'm thinking about planting a uh, passion flower back here. They're not my favorite flowers, but they are another great butterfly host plant. So you can look it up. There are a bunch of different host plants. They all host different butterflies. Um, I really kind of want to get a citrus tree and some rue because they host two other butterflies that I would like to have in my garden. So. I will put up some info on the screen right here that says a few common um, host plants that they told us at my butterfly gardening class and what butterflies they attract because I cannot remember them all off the top of my head. I do know that dill and parsley are great for swallowtail butterflies, specifically the black swallowtail. So we are going to go ahead. This guy has been, he's about halfway down on soil from last year. So I'm going to pop these guys out. I have some compost and new raised bed mix behind me. We're going to put some brand new potting soil in. We're going to pot these babies up and then we are going to hope for butterflies. I've been seeing lots in the yard, but of course no caterpillars because I don't have any host plants. We're going to rectify that.
right, we've got our lantana, we've got our dill, our parsley, our pretty, pretty calibracoa, which is just that dark, dark purple color. We've got my favorite and yours, the Super Tunia Bordeaux. It's just that beautiful lilac with the dark purple throat. The Sweet Alyssum, which not only smells good, is a great uh, deterrent for aphids and other pest bugs. And then another set of parsley, dill, and lantana. So we will see how these go. And I will keep you updated on if I decide to plant grapes or passion flower or uh, different clematis on these trellises. All in all though, pretty happy with my little butterfly garden. My goal is just to keep adding more butterfly host plants and nectar flowers, not only throughout the garden, but especially in this area by the milkweed so that I can gather as many butterflies to my yard as possible. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I will post up, oh, I probably already did it when I said it earlier, the list of host plants and butterflies from my butterfly class. Let me know down below if there is a host plant you love that's easy to grow, easy to find, because that's my main problem right now, and worth growing, because I'm looking at adding them. I will see y'all in the next video. One more thing. <laughs> if you'd like a video sharing everything I learned in my butterfly gardening class, let me know and I will sit down and walk you through all the handouts they gave us. I know there are plenty of YouTubers who do specific butterfly gardening, much more knowledgeable than I am, but I found it a really fun class and I'll put some pictures up right now. They had a whole bunch of monarch butterflies emerging from their chrysalises uh, while we were at class in their butterfly house. It was perfect timing, so extra motivation for me. And if you want to check out the entire Milkweed for Monarch series that I'm doing, click here. Okay, bye for real.